Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. Today we're going to look at the art of John Buscema. This was originally published in 1978, and it's not exactly a sketchbook, but it's a pretty fun and kind of intimate look at the work of John Buscema and um, compiled into a kind of neat book. So this is the wraparound cover. Um, this right side would be all kind of marquee it. This is probably approximately the front cover. And then this is the back cover over here on the left. Um, and, um, I don't know who colored this back then. They didn't, I mean, it is possible that John colored it, but, uh, man, his Hulk is great. You know, it's interesting going into this video. I kind of was thinking about John Buscema's, I, I, it might be pronounced Buscema, I've always said Buscema, but I, you know, I, it's me saying it in my head and then doing a YouTube video and what I kind of think it is. I, I haven't really heard a lot of people say it, but I, I think I might be saying it wrong. Um, uh, you know, we're at a point where it's 2023, and sadly, I think that that as each progressive generation of young artists comes in the comics, some of these guys and girls and their impact on comics is is gonna be slightly lost i hate to say it but um you know it wouldn't surprise me if you you know talk to some people that are maybe a couple of years into their career and and i don't know it's this isn't an, i'm not an old person talking about it because i'm still i'm kind of middle-aged <laughs> but but um you know Buscema did this work a long time ago. He's been gone for a long time. It's not like Buscema is part of a conversation that goes on with people in the art now. You know, everybody's buzzing about the next shiny button that is a digital program or whatever. But a lot of what we do in comics really is derived from things that John John created. So we'll get into the book and we can look at it and um, enjoy his work now. This is the cover. Oh, so it's, yeah, it's cropped. It's kind of a thing. Really, really cool. I'm sure different people have favorite characters that John did. You know, whether he worked on them on a series or you just always enjoyed the way that he drew the character when he did draw it, which might not have been as frequent. But, um, man, I'm digging the Hulk. <laughs> This is the back cover. Yeah, it's it's really interesting, and I don't what I don't really know what made me think of it, but I think I just looked at this and went like, man, I have a feeling that this is kind of getting lost in the shuffle now. Now it's very very possible that like many things, things circle back around, where just because right now at this moment, people aren't respecting the ogs we'll call it um you know it doesn't mean that three years from now all of a sudden something kind of retro hits and people start going like oh man i'm into jack kirby and you know john ramita senior and all this i mean it could happen it sounds uh, um, unlikely but i mean it, in any art field music whatever um there's just general generationally speaking things tend to kind of wind back around and the best shit is always the best shit you know mass is great kind of almost a joe kubert feel on this a little bit i think what's so cool about these old artists to me is the fact that a lot of like the simplification of anatomy is kind of still how we do it. We may put more detail on it, depending on what kind of style you draw on. But um, uh, yeah, they were able to narrow it down. And this this happened on the side too, meaning like an illustration with you know people that were doing some comic work and doing some illustration work and and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Had another book that I almost was gonna do. Here's John right here. I uh, that was called um, uh, John Buscema, the Michelangelo of comics. It's funny, his fingers all dirty. <laughs> He's got the inky finger. He must smudge with that finger. Who 
Looks like a nice guy. Beautiful head of hair. All right. So we got a little story. If you'd like to read it, you can pause this and read it. Um, and uh, get into that whole thing. If you'd like. All right. Oh, cool. So it's an interview with him. I wasn't really sure. I, I saw that there was a lot of spot illustrations. Well, that's, that's actually really cool. I'll, I'll, again, you can pause this if you want to read it. Popeye. I'm a big Popeye fan, too. I don't know why. Because <clears throat> I didn't really like it as a kid. And in fact, when it would come on, I would kind of be bummed. Because I was like, oh, man. There was the show that they would air in L.A. And I, I could get it down here in San Diego. And it was like two or three hours of like Popeye cartoons. And I was just like, man, this thing just takes over all of Sunday morning. But in retrospect, I kind of found myself... Like the Popeye thing is kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know why it was. It happened not not even that long ago. Maybe like in the last like fifteen or twenty years. So you never know when you're gonna come around on something. Hey hey hey! No fighting, ladies. Speaking of that, I'm actually one project that I'm gonna start possibly next week is I'm gonna go back and redo some of my more successful tutorial videos. There's a few reasons. One. I, I think I can maybe film them better. And two, um, at the time they were very casual. And um, unfortunately, some of them have a tremendous amount of views. And I will see comments and people are very annoyed by um, me. <laughs> Not all, but many. I have a video that's got almost, it's, I think it has 128,000 views. But it, it's it was at a time when my channel really didn't have a lot of activity. And... Uh, I just did a casual video showing how to ink something. I can't even remember what it was. But, uh, yeah, people were like, oh, get to the point. I'm like, I wasn't really a tutorial guy back then. You're looking at it from a 2023 perspective. Back then, you know, I was just, like, trying to find stuff to do on YouTube. Proco and that shit wasn't around. <laughs> so nice with art like this it's it's almost difficult for me to <coughs> really have too much to say in terms of um other than the fact that i think that there's some really like they're great gestures and there's brilliant simplification would be the best way to put it is if you want to learn your nuts and bolts of comics in in a very direct way that can that, that you can ramp it up and get really really detailed with I mean, this is all the the kind of iconography that's used, just in a in a more direct way than um, what you might see on some things. This is nice. It really looks like he wanted to do like a lot of fantasy stuff. I mean, obviously he did Conan, but um, yeah, I think left to his own devices, he he would have gone in like a Frazetta way or something and tried to do a body of work like that but it's, it was such a competitive market he was already kind of like so locked in with comics beautiful hands man those are great that is a chunky hand i saw someone even mention yesterday that they were working from the how to draw comics the marvel way which john illustrated uh, but yeah, I mean, oh, this is a really great drawing. It's funny. I'm, I, I usually don't get such a heavy Cubert, um, kind of like, I don't know if comparison would be the right word, but even this feels a little Cuberty, Joe Cubert, the inks and kind of the chunky approach to it. It's really cool. The gorilla, not as much, but this uh, monster right here this has kind of a Cuber. I mean, uh, yeah, Cuber vibe. Sorry. I think if you're an artist and you are into this stuff, one advantage that you have over digital art and the the impending doom that people feel from things like AI and whatnot is. There's a particular fan base of original art collectors 
that gravitate towards this. Not not saying drawing like John Buscema, but what I mean is because someone someone in the Super Fun Sunday was like AI is gonna take it all away or whatever. So that wasn't the exact thing that they said, but um, you know AI competes in a different um, ballpark. It it will eventually start to affect comic book jobs and design jobs and things like that but ultimately if you want to draw comic books and you put it out there that you're a traditional artist and you do this thing there's still a lot of people that would much much rather support someone that actually draws traditionally um and um has original art that they can purchase so there's a lot of different ways you can support yourself doing comic books doing traditional art that um, if you're really good, you can make a lot of money, far more on the original art than actually the jobs themselves, honestly. Um, so never underestimate the allure of sticking a pencil on paper and then inking it with a pen. And I see it, I see it firsthand on Patreon. Every uh, honestly, I I think I said this in a video not too long ago. I may have even said it on Patreon. That maybe it wasn't a YouTube video, but. Um, there's no doubt in my mind there's more and more people wanting to learn to ink every penciler that i see wants to ink themselves every inker that's just interested in inking you know is trying to improve their skills i mean inking has really had quite a renaissance um in the last like two years because i i almost never review anyone that just pencils anymore everybody is penciling and inking themselves so Again, just so simple, simple and solid. You know, he's got all the cues that give you the anatomy that you want, dynamic poses. He doesn't oh go overboard with any of this stuff, and it really works. Really works well. Oh man, I would I would love to. Um, I know there's video of him drawing because there's the if you search John Buscema drawing on YouTube, you can find um, kind of a supplemental how to draw comics the marvel way video where john and stan are kind of talking and john draws and shows examples but i would love to see him do pieces like this where he's doing like um little spot illustrations or you know things that he pencils and then inks with like a brush that would be great but it is a really really good It's funny. What characters you dislike having to do? Like I said before, the superheroes. So he, he's definitely into the whole fantasy, more organic kind of thing. That's interesting. Oh, he's going to say something about Stan Lee. This is getting good. They had to, they had to even do a blank page to keep create some suspense. <laughs> That's really awesome. He's going to give it to us straight. What is it? When I was working with Stan, and we worked on Silver Surfer Thor. Well, there you go. He loved working with Stan more than anyone else because he gave him so little to work with. He was able to be creative, and then Stan would go back in and work his magic. I have to say, though, that it is impressive what Stan would do because, the the obviously, on the front end, it could be seen as he was being lazy and putting a lot of the um, responsibility on the artist. But at the same time, most artists don't like to be told what to do. There's some people that need the direction, but... I don't, I don't like for me, I mean, it literally made, made it where I didn't want to work at a company because I couldn't even imagine having to have a writer write my stories for me. It just completely kills, in my opinion, the creative, um, spark and fun, but not everyone's like that. And there's a lot of great writers. So it's not, it's not saying that I could do it better or that you could do it better if you feel that way too what it means is it's just it's like to me it's all, like the stroke of being creative is you create something S someone doesn't tell tell you 
oh, well, you're going to draw the Joker and Batman and they're going to be running on rooftops. I mean, that might be exciting for some people to do, but, you know, I'm, I want the story. I want to know what, what, you know, what led to this, what, what goes beyond, beyond it. But I, w I want to create that myself. The moment that I have a little bit of information, my imagination starts to run, you know, and you want, and you want to get creative with that. And, um, I, I was looking at a comic book this morning and I was like, why would you cut away from this scene already? They was like, I'm not going to say what the book was, but they'd established like there was something exciting kind of going on. And it was like, it was just getting going. And all of a sudden they cut to this other thing. And I was like, this is like, why, why did you do this? And, but like, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. You can tell too when when artists when they draw a lot on the side they're trying to scratch that creative itch i feel like they do the work and it's a job but but their passion of drawing is these these other things oh, <laughs> I, you know what I actually have this comic I forgot about that so he did he did the Wizard of Oz it's like a um, Marvel treasury size thing I didn't realize it was Buscema interiors but I better I bet it is I do have it for sure it's pretty good I haven't seen it in a long time but it's somewhere you know what I actually have a stack of Marvel treasuries in my studio right now I could actually have it in here and not even realize it they're cool they're really good Oh man, that's nice. Speaking of Joe Kubert. God, man, that's so badass. I love the sketch. It was interesting when we were looking at the Joe Bonita sketchbook, he would do coils. Uh, I mean, this is, he's kind of indicating like sort of ragged clothes and a sleeve rolled up. But um, Joe would actually, like, when he would draw the form, he would do these um, circular shapes on the cylinders of the body and uh it was kind of neat how we would build that man this is some good shit beautiful forms here god it's good and then again fantastic hands his hand gestures are the shit yeah that's good that's nice too The interview stuff is pretty interesting. I'm like, oh, hmm. Hopefully people are reading it or will read it. Oh, this is nice. This is a nice book. This is really, really good. Man, it's classic. Pretty John Buscema girl face. This is great, too. I feel like, like two things that John really did add to comics was this. This face. It's kind of morphed into different things, but, man... He drew some really, really tough looking guys with that dark kind of shadow around their eyes. And then his women were always like super hot. This is cool. More classic. That's so interesting. Again, really, really nice sketches. Man, that's good. Mobius has a watercolor blueberry collection that has some stuff that looks like this. So it's it's interesting. I wonder if, if Mobius was influenced by Buscema as like a teenager. Oh, well, there's, there's actually that other guy too, though, that kind of draws like that. I'm trying to think of his name. It's like a European artist, I think. Oh, what is his name? <laughs> it's the John Buscema shoes, like the feet and shoes are so great. So he was still working on Conan at this time. He's going to San Diego Comic Con. And then he's going to a convention in France. Bonjour. So good. This is really interesting. 
And the way that he inks this, I'm trying to think of where that was. This is reminding me of, um, like, it doesn't look like Scott Williams inks, but if you look at, like, 80s, like, the 80s stuff that he was doing on Jim, the genesis of some of the techniques that he used are, are kind of in here with, the, like, the thin, the thick, and, the, um, like, you could almost see the waggle sort of starting, you know, like, the, the this line could just as easily lead to the the sort of zipper effect thing that they would do, which might have come from Neil Adams, but I, I definitely think that Neil Adams was a Buse Semma guy, too. It's cool. It's kind of like I've been yesterday. I spent all day working on the Blaster Kid logo, and um, it was really interesting going through hundred hundreds of fonts and seeing what elements that I liked um, of different fonts, and then kind of you know you go go kind of beyond it. But what shapes like what shapes I like. But um, it was it was funny what I was gravitating towards. But uh, yeah, these are some interesting shapes on this. It's smooth lines, you know. In particular, it's a little different for John in, in terms of the silhouette. It's it's rare that he would have so many round shapes like this. There's a lot of like, um, like stretched out S curves. It's like, hey, we want to take your photo. He's like, what? Guy, his hands. Dude, that's so badass. Man, he draws the best freaking forearms, too. This is really, really great shit. Man, that is massive. I really like how he pops these um, the bones so high up and then has the hand really lock into this hinge here. Man, that is good. This is great, too. As I'm staring at it, I'm picturing the bones. I mean, he really, really... I don't... Let me... Uh, you can literally see the bones and the fingers. Um, brush. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the skeleton underneath this. He really, really draws the bone with a little bit of skin on it. I mean, these are these are just the core shapes of it. And then this comes up in here. This guy's awesome. It's just kind of funny. It's like, it's just like, I'll just going to lay down and chill for a minute. It's all right. Yeah, he was a tough cookie. It's funny. He's talking about that. He doesn't think that there's many guys in the business that have his attitude or, or kind of thing. And I remember um, reading something a long, long time ago about that, that he was... He had a very old school attitude. Of, in fact, I don't think that Buscema was actually a big fan of when. Um, I'm not saying that he wasn't a fan of their art, but when guys like Barry Windsor Smith and Bernie Wrightson um, started doing really, really detailed stuff, I think John kind of saw that as a direct threat on the sort of, you know, you laid out, you lay out five pages a day, you draw, you know, two pages a day. Um, and books get done, and when you had people that were willing to spend an exorbitant amount of time per issue, they put an, it put a weird strain on him as someone who would make his income by doing monthly books, maybe two monthly books, um, as opposed to uh, someone who could spend, you know, three months on a book, you know, and poured every ounce of detail on to this stuff, and I think that there was a little bit of a conflict for John in terms of what what that meant to him directly as a professional comic book artist. Again, I'm I'm basing that on a memory of something that I read. I can't remember what it was in. Or where where I saw it. It was definitely from John though. That wasn't like someone else said it about John. 
This is nice. God, man, these sketches are so good. Really amazing. So, okay, we are almost at the end here. Everyone have a nice day. I'm going to get to work. Um, that's nice. So, speaking of Bernie Wrightson, it kind of has a Wrightson feel. <laughs> How do you feel about fans? Like a few times I met up with a couple of them and they're real pains in the neck, but most of them are nice. And then this is at oh Neil Adams portfolio. Hmm, interesting. If you've always enjoyed the talents of Neil Adams, if you've always thought paying twenty, thirty, forty dollars for a black and white portfolio is a ripoff, if you've ever wished for a full color portfolio, if you've ever thought of investing or starting your own portfolio library, here we go. Ten dollars for full color. Ironically, people want the black and white because they want it to look more like the original art. But these are look like painted pieces. Those are pretty insane, too. Artists always fighting technology. People go, there's this new thing. This has never happened before, ever. It happens every, every generation, every few years. There's some new technology that's going to throw artists into the gutter and we're all going to be broke and then what happens the artists flourish <laughs> no i don't know maybe not flourish some corbin right there sorry you guys have a great day go grab out your john buscema comics buscema buscema however they say it and uh enjoy spread the word the john is out there still his work lives on so that the kids the peach momokos <laughs> no she's really good um be curious to interview her just about john buscema though she's like boy what are you talking about no it's all right all right so have a great day i'll talk to you later and um if you have recommendations for other videos let me know I'm seeing some good names right here i'm like hmm lots of good talent just listed here if I could, I wish I could find the Neil Adams portfolio. It might be on Heritage. I could look and see if it's up there. That would be actually pretty badass to see. So, okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.